today? I am good. All right. Excellent. So the first lesson that we're going to do today is called making statements. All right. So i um, giving you an example. Now we have scene starts. You've heard me talk about scene starts before, right? But with making statements, it's even easier. So instead of saying you, I, we, and having these specific things, this one, we just get to make statements. And so, uh, for example, what I'm doing right now is making statements. Uh, we're going to play a game called making statements. Now, I notice I didn't say, would you guys like to make statements? I'm not going to do that because you don't have a choice anyway. So, <laughs> and that would be a question. So uh, to make statements, what that means is we're just practicing this concept of adding information. Remember, yes and is agreeing with what your partner brings up and adding information. So yes and is a statement, right? But no but is also a statement. So this is a little bit of an easier scene starter. And what I want you to do, you're going to get with a partner. Well, maybe we'll do one here as an example. Um, in fact, I'm going to pick on some people. How about Bill and Jack? Can I pick on you guys for a second? Sure. All you right. And Bill, did. that was a question, Jesse. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm going to pick on you guys for a second. And what I want you to do is you're going to do a brief scene for us where all you do is make statements. You're not allowed to ask any questions at all. And you can do whatever else you want. And the suggest, you're not even going to get a suggestion. I want you to just start up with it with just random statements. And I'm going to, I'm going to be quiet for a second and you guys can start. You don't get a suggestion or anything. You just have to start a scene right now. Go for it. Jack, it's just horrible seeing you today. Bill, it's always horrible seeing you. You disgust me. <laughs> yes, but disgusting is what I do best, Jack. It is. You are the most disgusting improviser I've ever seen. It's true. I am so disgusting that the word disgust was made just for me. The, just a new definition is my name only. Yes, I was reading in the dictionary. It shows Bill Dewey in a picture of you next to disgust. It is so bad, Jack, that books burn themselves when they get that definition added. Bill, okay, I just watched... <laughs> so, I love the book burning that like <laughs> great job you guys okay now everybody can see the example that was a good example now uh you can you can go about it any way you want what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put you into breakout rooms okay and so what you're going to do is you're going to jump in there and you're going to do that any questions I think I did Nancy have a question, has a question. Just like Nancy yes yeah. you're on mute though Nancy Nancy, needs to, Nancy needs to unmute <laughs> Hang on a minute. Just a minute. Well, is it just random nonsense that we throw out there? That's just what Jack and Bill did. That doesn't mean that's what you do. No, actually, they, they had a theme, right? They were sticking with it. Um, yeah. You know, it's whatever you want, though. It's just statements. That, that's the only rule. I don't know if it's random nonsense. Maybe for you it is. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a very practical scene that's very realistic, and it's about something that's really happening. Uh, you know, that, that's fine, too. But either way, it's got to be statements. So I'm going to divide you guys up and I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do this. So if you run out of breath, just pause and start a new scene. But don't stop doing statements for the entire two minutes, okay? It's nonstop, you know, you know no, no, no finishing or, or, you know, ending the thing. You got to just keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. All right, so we're going to have uh, two people in a room. And uh, when, when you see the button, you can join it and jump on in. And remember, you're making statements, nonstop making statements. There you go. Go for it. Picture that, that she sees with that Jack has on there. Um, when she does that in improv, even though some of us like, I, I don't think Bill saw it. I, I saw it. I, I saw Abby shake her head. Cause so I don't think she saw it, but because Nancy says this is happening in improv, we go along with it. Mm -hmm. So in other words, instead of us going, unless the game, unless we're trying to make a game up about how one person sees something that isn't there. And then, then we could do a scene about, you know, this, this ghost that visits Jack and only Nancy can see the ghost. Nancy sees dead people scene, right? Mm -hmm. it, that, that could be a game, but most of the time what we want to do is we want to go along with it because somebody brings up something in their statement and it doesn't make any sense to you at all. And it doesn't matter. You just go along with it because that is part of the yes. And that's the concept of yes. And you're, you're saying yes. And, and you're going to add some information. You're going to build the scene together on it. So 
Um, that was kind of fun. Thank you, Nancy, for the segue. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be funny, but I just asked who that gentleman was in the picture with Jack. So now we're going to play a game called Gemini. And Gemini is actually, these are all short form games, by the way. These are real ones that we've done in shows in the past, by the way. Yep. This is an actual, it's, a, it's kind of a workshop game, but it's also a game that could be done in a show. So Gemini is, you know, is like this two personality or two faced person. And the idea is that you and one other person pretend that you have the same brain and you are the same person and you get one word at a time. It's kind of like word at a time story, but only with two people. And the other thing is, is instead of having to stick to a story format, like once upon a time, you don't, you know, you don't have to do that. You can actually just speak in the first person if you want. You can say I, and then, the, then, then your partner has to say the next word. And that's the great thing about this game is you have no idea what that person's gonna say and you're gonna, you can't try to control the sentence very well. You have to get on the same wavelength with your partner and do what we call a mind meld, right? You wanna have a group think activity going on there. So just as an example, let me pick on two other people. Um, let's have Paul and um, Victoria, if you don't mind. Let's have you guys try this just for the class. You do a short scene. And you're just going to do Gemini, which is Paul, Paul and Victoria, you only have one word each. And so it's okay if there's a pause, because especially with Zoom, it's kind of challenging. You know, there, there's sometimes the, 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 the audio, audio isn't perfect. So just say one word and then the other person says the next word and see if you can keep having the, a, a scene happen. Like, like actual, you know, it could be, you can pretend that you're both in the scene and you're just finishing each other's sentences, or you could pretend as if you're the, 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 um, one person okay and uh, to, to start you off I'm gonna give you a question this is an easy way to get started because then you can just answer the question right and the the question is is um, what have you done with the person in Jack's picture what have you done with the person in Jack's picture okay now Victoria and Paul you guys are in a scene one word at a time go for it closet is where the person has might and possibly or maybe not decided is come out with a person gun and bang <laughs> ouch okay not bad so um you can play this however you want what you guys did was are uh, what's interesting is uh, those sentences that was like one really long run-on sentence without without a period in it however what the audience will try to do, because we are on your side, and this is a cool thing about, about improv, is the audience is gonna be like, they're gonna fill in the commas, and the dashes, and the semicolons, and the hyphens. So in our brain, you know, like some of those, those sentences, I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense, but it would if somebody was, because people speak differently than they write, correct? So when you're writing, it's grammatically correct, but when you speak, a lot of times we, kind of start and stop sentences anyway, right? Like I, I could speak like that in real life and most people can follow. And that's what that sounded like, right? So we were kind of going comma, and I guess there was a hyphen in there, you know, <laughs> right? But what you want to try to do is see if you can make complete sentences and then you can pause and take a breath and see if you can try to put it together. Let's have one other person try. Let me have Abby and Raymond give it a shot. You guys are gonna, and your, your question is, what have you done with Jack's friend? We travel to Africa and go looking. What'd you say? Sorry. Looking at Jack's cheetah. Then Jack's. Cheetah runs very quickly over the 
river flowing through the jungle. Good, and scene, good. What I really like there, notice there was a, at least one time, if not two, where they actually started a new sentence. And there was one of them I noticed specifically that Raymond paused and then he started a new sentence. He went, then, and you could tell it was a new sentence. So that's an important skill in this game. You don't wanna feel like it's a never ending sentence, right? And, and sometimes we feel that pressure because you go, and he ran to the jungle, which like, oh, you didn't need to keep the sentence going. You know, you can just start a new sentence, right? You don't have to make it like this continuous flow. Uh, you, can, you can go ahead and end sentences and start new ones. Uh, the other thing this game does, which is really interesting, and that's why we're playing it, is it's really the ultimate in patience. Because like, if you feel, right now it's easy on, on Zoom, right? In a class, it's easy. But watch what happens if you were in front, imagine if you were in an audience and like the thumbnail theater and there was 50 people in the audience who, who are all excited for a show and then you get on stage to do the scene. There's pressure all of a sudden. And that pressure, which we don't get here, it makes you really impatient to try to get to something funny or to try to make, do something amazing. And that works against you here. So enjoy the class setting where you can kind of relax and just kind of mess up a little bit. Be okay with messing up. The idea is, is that you want to train yourself to relax and just think of, just have the first word that comes to your head usually is the right one. The other problem that we run into with this that you have to watch out for is you have to be okay with prepositions and connecting mm -hmm. words and you gotta be okay with saying the, a, uh, a, you know, like, it like it's not exciting but that's the word that was required to finish the sentence properly to make it even coherent because I, I i have seen so many people in classes in this game who are like uh who have to come up with the amazing noun albatross <laughs> and coherent and like they they want to come up with this great word and and the word and it was like you know you needed to say the but I don't want to say the, that's boring. My turn won't come around for a while. Eh, you know, no, it's not about you and your turn. It's about the scene you're creating together. It's about the sentence you created together, right? So let it go, let it go. Any questions? I have one. Yes. Uh, is, is there some way to denote to the end of a sentence other than pausing? Uh, you know, like we do with one word story, if you want to clap and call it a, a period. Yeah. Like if you're like, I, I think it's done, clap. In here, you can do that for practice, but don't get too used to that because we don't do that in the, on the stage. Oh, okay. you know, we, that would be weird. The audience would be like, why did Paul just clap? <laughs> you know, like, is he excited that they came to the end of the sentence? Okay. For now, you can do it just until you get used to it, but you want to actually feel it and hear it and then just pause, okay? So uh, let's continue the brainstorming. We're going to do it in breakout rooms because that's a little easier. I'm gonna, you guys want the same partners or a new partner? We do what the teacher tells us. Any, any, uh, I'm giving you a choice. It's I'm going to give you a new, I'm going to recreate it. Statements, Jesse. Your choice. Oh. You choice. Yeah. <laughs> take, take, take charge. Quit asking us questions. We All right. Well, here you go. You get new people. Go for it. Jump in there, crazies. <laughs> really weird. Les is really. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what did I come back to? <laughs> a lot of yeah, this is a PG I was trying to pause at some spots to make it sound like, okay, I'm starting a new sentence. But we got into squealing dolphins and spearing fish and nice. in the streets. Nice. <laughs> in the streets. Actually, a little bit in uh, Wyoming right now. <laughs> Okay, so um, great. Now we're gonna use that. Uh, we're gonna use that skill for a game. Uh, I, I don't like Gemini as much on the stage as Mr. Know It All or Mrs. Know It All or the Know It All or Doctor Know It All. It goes by many names. Originally, it was Mr. Know It All. So um, this game is actually really fun. The audience loves it, by the way. 
this is where I'm going to take one of you as a volunteer to, uh, to ask questions, or maybe I can the first time if you want, but I'd prefer to pick one of you guys to ask questions and to be the MC. And then uh, three of you will be Mr. Know-it-all or the know-it-all, Dr. Know-it-all. And the way this game works is typically on stage is you'd be sitting there in a chair or you'd be standing really close to each other. We used to hold up something in front of us to make it look like it was a three-headed monster or something. And uh, you, you, the, the know-it-all knows all. And we ask the audience, you can ask it anything and it knows the answer. And so people will ask personal questions that you don't even know this person, you got to answer it, or they ask what the meaning of the universe is and meaning of life, all that kind of stuff. Whatever they ask, you have to answer. And then uh, you get one word each. And so it, let's say there's three people, uh, then person one goes, person two, person three, and then it goes back to one. So if you have a, a four word sentence, person one is finishing it, right? So uh, person one has, has the first word, second word goes to the second person, third word goes to the third person. And then you just keep going through sequentially through the group. And it's really pretty interesting. So do I have a volunteer for who wants to be the MC? Who's going to ask questions? Bill, Bill is the MC. Bill will be asking the questions. And Bill, you remember how this game goes, right? I do. Okay, so I'll let you just kind of take it away. If you're not in the scene, you'll be one of his audience members. Uh, and now I need uh, volunteers to be the know-it-all, Dr. Know-it-all. I got Jack, Paul, and Nancy. You guys are our first three. Jack, Paul, Nancy. The Jack, Paul, Nancy show. Peter, Paul, and Mary. The <laughs> Jack, Paul, Nancy. Okay. And uh, Jack, Paul, and Nancy. Jack, Paul, and Nancy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That will be who you are. Um, Dr. Jack, Paul, and Nancy. Uh, and then, so Bill, uh, every, everyone else who's not in the scene, you're going to be uh, asking questions. Okay. And then the know-it-all, the order is Jack, Paul, and then Nancy. Okay, so Jack, you, uh, Jack, you always start, you always get the first word. And now a couple of tips on this. As, the, as Dr. Know-it-all, you can decide when you feel a sentence or a question has been fully answered. Sometimes it's whenever you pause, you know, like you feel like you've paused long enough, then, then that, might, that might be the answer. And, uh, or Bill can decide when, the, when it has been answered. So sometimes Bill might go, that's about enough. And he might kind of interrupt you, right? But typically Bill's going to want to wait until they get to a kind of a pause, a stopping point. When they take a breath, Bill, and you feel like the question's mm -hmm. been answered, you come in. And then quick review for you, Bill. You want to repeat, you want to get a question from the audience, but you always repeat it again slowly so that the know-it-all hears it clearly. And then after the know-it-all gives their answer, Bill, you try to, you try to repeat their answer no will, matter how long it is. I will interpret the answer. You, you try to actually repeat exactly word for yeah. word their answer, <laughs> even if it's really long. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Bill, I, I'm going to let you take it away. So, uh, tonight we've got uh, Dr. Jack Paul Nancy with us. They're known internationally as the Mr. And Mrs. Miss Know It Alls of the world. They know everything there is to know about anything. You can ask questions of any subject and you will just, just be prepared because you are about to be amazed. Do we, do we have any questions from the audience, please? Uh, yes, yes. Lady out there I, in the purple. I, my name's Mildred and I'm from New York. I would like to know who's going to win the 2032 election. Okay, Miss Mildred. Uh, Dr. Dr. Jack Paul Nancy, did you get that? Uh, Miss Mildred would like to know who you think is going to win the 2023 election. No, the 2032 election. Oh, I'm sorry, the 2032 election. Russia. Will. I think take it away in a landslide. <laughs> oh, I only need one word. <laughs> 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 Start that one over again, Jack. Start sorry, that one over again. I'm That's sorry. great. One party will decide who wins. Mm. Ah, See, uh, very wise. One of will decide who <laughs> wins. Well, wow, that's just, I don't know about you, but I'm absolutely amazed. <laughs> do, do we have any other questions from the audience? 
yes, yes. You with the glasses, please. My dog has to wear a diaper now. Uh, do you have any tips for uh, for dealing with a dog with a diaper on? I, I'm sure there. I'll get a good answer for this. Um, the gentleman's dog now needs to wear a diaper. What tips can you give our audience member for dealing with his doggy diaper issue? One. Must. Change. There. Diaper. Regularly. Two. Another. But. So. That. Irritation. Goes. Away. So, I, I hope you understood that. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. But Thank you, doctor. I appreciate it. What, what, what you are. Change the diaper often so the irritation goes away that is that is really deep that that's one for the books i think do we have any more questions from the audience please i have a follow-up question if that's okay well as, as long as it follows up yes please i what is the i'll say optimal way to fold a doggy diaper to maximize storage as well as utilization. Is that when it's on the dog or off? <laughs> on. <laughs> Dr. Jack Paul Nancy, the gentleman would like to know what the optimal way is to fold a diaper once it has been applied to the dog. First, you must take the bottom of the dog and fold. Wait, what was that? Fold <laughs> it into quarters. There, I, I think that answers the question. First, you must take the bottom of the dog, the bottom of the dog, and fold it into quarters. Thank you. Thanks. That really helps. You're very, well, very, very welcome. Uh, any other questions from the audience? Are you lady in the uh, the red the red gang hoodie? I have another follow-on question. What should I do with the doggy diaper if it doesn't spark joy? Would, would you, I just, just the last part of your question, please. What should I do with the doggy diaper if it does not spark joy? Oh, oh, now that, that, oh my dear, that is an excellent question. Eep. What should I do with this doggy diaper if it does not spark joy? Is that joy for you, by the way, or joy for the dog? <laughs> oh, joy for you. Nobody cares about the dog. Okay, that's joy. We already folded for, the dog up. Nobody cares. That's joy for the doggy's owner. The dog is secondary. Get the L out of. I think that there. was the answer. <laughs> I think that was the answer. Just get the hell out. <laughs> Thank you. That really helps. You're, you're very, very welcome. I think you can take that one to the bank. I sure can. Do we, do we have any other audience questions? Preferably not a follow-up. Yes, sir, you that started this questioning line. Uh, what's the uh, meaning of life? Oh, oh now that is, that, that is a absolutely beautiful question. And I'm sure that Dr. Jack Polancy have a perfect answer for you. What is the meaning of life? Two plus one is a three. Perfect. So, I, I mean, have you ever heard such a cosmic answer? Mm -hmm. Two plus one is a three. It was very mathematical, like the life of pi or something. Very interesting. Uh, yes. I, I, even I was amazed at that answer. 
Doing All right, good job. Hey, great work. Give them a round of applause. Good job, you three. Um, would uh, another three like to try this game who haven't just done it? Yeah. Sure. I'll do the commentator. Okay, Nancy, we're going to have you be the, uh, the MC. And okay. then we'll have Raymond and Abby. Les, did you raise your hand? Yes, yes. Okay, so Raymond, Abby, Les. <clears throat> Les, Abby, Raymond. Ray ass less. <laughs> less rabies. I don't know. I less, like ha less rabies. Less <laughs> rabies. Less rabies. Less rabies. Less rabies. Less rabies. <laughs> is that what it is? Less I, think, I think we're going to go with less rabies, <laughs> which is I less. I kind of like the assless, but that's okay. <laughs> less rabies is fine. Less, that less Ray assless. Ray, uh, uh, let's go with less Raymond Abbey. So it's less than Raymond than Abbey. Less and rabies. Then, and then <laughs> less rabies. And Nancy, you are the MC. And then questioners, get your questions ready. All right, let's go for it. Well, okay, we're here to meet up with a great philosopher of all time, Dr. Ray Lesbies. <laughs> Rabies less? Okay. <laughs> Ray less bees. Anyway, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? But we're going to take audience participation. They can get really deep. So be prepared for some spectacular openings. Okay, it's going to broaden your horizons. Does anybody have any questions regarding anything? Okay, you, sir, in, that has that other gentleman next to him down there, raising your hand. Yeah, yeah, we want to know, um, what is Dr. Les Rabies going to do about unemployment? Okay, they want to know, what is Dr. Les Rabies going to do about unemployment? Nothing. Uh. <laughs> Well, there you go. That answers it. Nothing at. I mean, could you ask for a more definitive answer? Uh, didn't, didn't you just feel your, your horizons broadening? Okay, anybody else with a question? Okay, you, sir, down there waving your hand. So, so I, got this, I got this issue. This issue, I got moles in my backyard and fungus on my toes. And I think I, I think they kind of happened at the same time. So what's what's the right solution for moles in my toe fungus? Okay, so this gentleman wants to know since he's got moles in his backyard and fungus on his big toe, what can he do to solve this problem, Doctor Les Rabies? Well. <laughs> First, X-Lax. I, I missed, I'm sorry, Abby, what'd you say? X-Lax. Would be best for direct fungus removal. There you go. Could you ask for more? I mean, what, what, do you, what do you know? I mean, that is just awesome, inspiring. Could you, this could Dr. You, Les could Rabies you, could you has got said, it please? together. Could Can I repeat, get another question? Could you repeat what they said, please? Because I didn't hear their whole answer. I'm so sorry. They told you to use x lax and that works fine. <laughs> okay, next question. <clears throat> yes, sir, up there with your hand up nice. Um, how do I solve my um, interpersonal relationship issues? Okay, this gentleman is asking, how do you solve his interpersonal relations? <laughs> Take several. Ibuprofen. <laughs> Take several what? Ibuprofen. Every. You. Every what? Few minutes. Oh, well, there you go. Take ibuprofen every few minutes. It'll work like a charm. 
your relations will be just uh, clamoring to be around you. You'll have to push them away. That will work wonders. Okay, any other questions for Dr. Les Rabies? Oh, that lady down there in the purple jacket. Quite yeah. attracted, by the way, that jacket. Why, thank you. There is a worldwide corn shortage, coin shortage, and I have a coin machine, but I need to get hold of some metals to make my <laughs> coins. I was thinking of putting different faces on them, but you know, do you know where I can get the metals for my coin machines? That I oh, need. Okay, this lady would like to know how to get some metals for her coin machines. Well, I have the same question, also. Just so you know, I, I thank you for asking. I have that same question. Oh, okay. Well, then Julia will too. get awe-inspired, awe and well, she too. wants to put me different. Too. Oh, you too? I didn't. No, oh. I didn't. <laughs> okay. Listen, I control this group. Stop getting out of hand now. We're going to try to find out from these uh, less rabies who know it all, big know-it-alls, but anyway, how to get these metals to put in her coin machine so she can make these coins with different faces on them. And I have the second part to the question. Whose famous faces should I put on it? Pinocchio? Bozo or, or Donald Duck. And oh, what, and she would like to add. And who's denominations. Face? Who's going to be on the nickel, the penny, and the quarter? Pinocchio, Bozo, or Donald Duck. Yeah. Or which ones? The nickel, the penny, or the quarter? Go. Steel. Steel. <laughs> Is. Cheap. Copper is shiny. Bronze can lose some luster. Well, there you go. I'm sure that answers all of your questions there. Oh, Dr. Les Rabies, give him a give him a give him a hand. Woo! Not quite. I still want to know whose faces are going to be on what coins, please. Oh, okay. This lady would like to know whose face to put on which metal, which which coin. Mickey. No. Yeah. Bozo. Um, Pinocchio, Pinocchio or Bozo and, and Donald Duck. Yes. We were just going to say Mickey won't be on it, but that's okay. Uh, Donald Duck should go on the nickel. Bozo often goes on the penny. Who is the other one? Pinocchio. Oh, yes. And Pinocchio. You're lying, right? No. Pinocchio really doesn't <laughs> go on any coin. There you go, ma'am. You got your answer. And those other people that wanted Thank to know you that, so that, much. that that's great. That, Thank you. That hey, stirring uh, question. Great job, you guys. Nancy, I'd never thought of this before you did it tonight, but I would actually put you as the MC on stage on this game because of your, yes. you're so animated about it and it you got so fun. into it. And you, you actually, it. you elaborated in a way that made it even more entertaining and kind of, it, it was funny all on its own in a different way than normal. So I love it. If you ever want to do MC, uh, let me know because I think I'm you'd up be a for good it. Um, all right, cool. It Can we move on? Blue I think a those, break, right? <laughs> right, give Blue a break, yeah. Yes. Um, that was very fun. And, and I know it's, it's a challenging game also as MC. Um, and Victoria gave us a great example of an audience member who's really excited about it. And that happens. And sometimes you want to let that audience member just keep asking questions and it's funny. In her case, you would. There are other audience members 
don't do it the way Victoria does it and do it in not so cool of a way. And they try to take over in that case, you do want to, you know, lay the hammer on them, Nancy. So I think you did a really good job of that, you know, just dealing with it and, and rolling with the punches. So I thought that was really great. It is fun sometimes when you want to, when they want it to keep going and you're like, Nope, we're done. <laughs> you, you have the power to do that, Nancy. So, okay. um, excellent. And then you guys uh, who are, who are doing the one word, it's really tough. But what you guys did was was exceptional for the first run through. As you get better at this, like when we rehearse this, you you almost want to get up to lightning speed. So probably at least twice as fast as you guys were. So you're then the dog went to the like you're trying to get it to where it's so fast that it's almost like a regular single person speaking. And that's hard to do. Like it's really hard. I wouldn't expect that today but just to give you something to push for next time. Um, not that you can't ever slow it down, but you want to have the ability to do both, either slow and thoughtful or quick and rapid fire so that it actually wows the audience. The only way to do that is to let go of that um, critical mind and just say what comes out. Uh, because if you second guess, second guess, second guess, that slows you down. That, all that, that second guessing is what will slow this game down. That's why I love this game so much because anybody who's really good at it truly is improvising because you can't you can't be in you can't self-edit right your, your inner critic has to shut up right okay so now we're going to do a fun one that we haven't tried on zoom i'm excited we're going to do give and take focus party scene you guys remember the party scenes where you give and take focus we do this on stage all the time uh in the beginning i'm going to call it out but we're going to do it like a scene so this is an all play everybody gets to do this one so we're going to have uh uh, we're going to have a group of three, uh, or well, let's do mm, two. Yeah. Let's do a group of three, a group of three and a group of two. Okay. And I'll, I'll stay out of it and kind of be the director for this one. So let's just make it simple. I better type these in. So, you know, let's do Paul Raymond and Bill in a scene in, in one group. In the second group, we'll have Nancy, um, Les and Jack, and then, oh, sorry, Jack, it's Jacques. You got typed in as Jacques. And then uh, Abby and Victoria, you guys are going to be the two person group. Now, you all. You could grab that guy that's next to Jack and put him in their group. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, so, what, what you're going to do is you're, you're all in the same scene together. You're at a party, okay? You're at a dinner party, but it's kind of fancy and there's people mingling and you're holding a drink. Um, I, just imagine maybe a bigger house or kind of a, a lodge, some kind of hall where there'd be a gathering. Maybe there's some music in the background. There may, it may be bigger. There may be um, live music. There may be people serving food. Um, and in this case, there's gonna be, um, there's an open bar and um, there's gonna be uh, dinner served later and it hasn't been served yet. So I'm just kind of giving you the outline there. Why you're at the party, I don't know. You're going to make that part up. Who you are, you're going to make up. All I gave you is the where. Okay, what are you doing? I'm make you, you're mingling, but other than that, that's up to you. So who you are and kind of the deeper uh, elements of what you're doing there is up to you, all right? So it's kind of fun. And then uh, in your group, you're going to stay in your group tonight the whole time. We're not going to mix it up. That's hard enough in real life. It's almost crazy impossible here for now. Uh, we're just going to do the simple version anyway. So you're going to do your group. And when I call you out, that's when the, the spotlight goes to you. So here's, here's the hard part. You have to imagine as if the, the time is passing, like it's just passing for, at the same rate for everybody in this Zoom meeting right now. Everyone on stage, time is passing, okay? So when someone gets the focus, like one of the groups begins speaking, it doesn't mean that you are frozen or shut off. All it means is that the focus has moved over to the other group. In fact, the lights might not even have gone down on you on stage. You might still have the light on you. I don't know. But the focus, like the spotlight, is going to go to one group. And then it's going to go to another group. When the focus is on that group, that's when we get to hear what you're saying. So as an audience member, I get to, when I turn my head over to group one, I'm going to hear what group one says. When I move over to group two, I'm going to hear what they say and then, and then so on. And, and I'm, as the director, I'm going, to, I'm going to indicate, I would normally point, but today I'll say it. I'm going to indicate which group is going to be heard. Now, here's the challenge. When you're not going, so when you're not in the group that's talking, you're still in the scene. So you have to continue miming your drinking of your glass, 
or whatever you're doing in your little space. And if you're having a conversation with the person next to you, you're nodding, you're, you're, you're still talking, but you're going to mime it and you're going to do it silently. You could even mute your video to make it easier, you know, like to make sure, but either way, no sound will come out of your mouth, but you may actually continue to mouth words. You don't have to do it that obvious and nerdy like I just did, but you know, you don't have to be like, you know, you don't have to do that. You can, you can kind of, you know, just continue to talk. That's how uh, I normally talk, Jesse. I, oh, and sorry, Les. I, fun, uh, I did mean to pick on you okay, specifically cool. there. Um, <laughs> all right. So uh, what, when it comes back to you, though, you have to be ready to continue. Now, here's another thing that people mess up. You're not continuing where you left off like we would with the Herald. Because it wasn't like a scene cut and then we're going to follow up. This is all live. So in other words, if, let's say if I, if I um, am on group one and you're in group two, and then I move to group three and 30 seconds passes. When I move back to your group, group two, you have to act as if you've continued your conversation for 30 seconds that we didn't hear. And then we're just going to go from there. So you may, let's say, for example, I always like the example of if somebody pulled a gun, which don't do, but let, uh, just for an extreme example, let's say in your scene, uh, in, while you're talking, you pull a gun on somebody and then I move away from you. So you, the audience doesn't get to hear what you're saying. You may have spend the next 20 seconds deliberating with the gun and then you might actually shoot the person in the silent scene and then they're lying on the ground bleeding and then it finally comes back to you. What would you then say? You know, or the, the, maybe the bleeding person says, I, uh, uh, you know, like, and that's, that's where you go. You don't get to go back to where you started holding the gun, right? So that time passes either way. That's the challenge of this game. And this is all about learning how to give and take focus. It's one of the most important elements in a group scene in improv. It's very challenging. Okay, so everybody's playing now. You know the setting, you know the scenario. Uh, group one is Paul, Raymond, Bill. Group two is... Um, uh, let's do Abby and Victoria. You are group two. Nancy, Les, and Jacques are group three. What about okay. Jack? It, what group is he in? Oh, Jack is with Jacques. Oh, he's with Jacques. <laughs> that okay. is the name That's of his friend that I can't see. That's guy standing next to him, right? <laughs> That's the guy standing next to him that I can't see. I love it. <laughs> Nancy sees dead people today. All right. All right. So, um, I'm just going to come in and interrupt people and you never know how long it's going to be. So just be ready for anything. Uh, I'm going to start right away here with uh, group one, which is Paul, Raymond, Bill. Uh, again, group two is Abby and Victoria, group three, Nancy, Les, Jack, Paul, Raymond, Bill, you're going to kick it off. You're going to start. And uh, remember you're independent groups, independent people at the party. And you probably don't hear what someone else is saying unless they're speaking really loudly. It, you don't necessarily hear what someone in another group is saying unless they speak loudly, because you're involved in your own conversation, just like in real life, you're, you're, you're blocking everybody else out so you can hear, right? You might overhear what someone else is saying. All right, that's up to you. And begin. You know, I wish they'd have single malt scotch at that bar. I mean, these, our hosts are being a little tight. Yeah, blends, oh no, no. You know, give me a good Highland, yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, Raymond and Paul, what, what really gets me is they, you know, we get these invitations to come to these supposedly highbrow fundraisers for, I, I don't know, what's this one for? Pet pigs or something, you know, whatever the dumb yeah. cause is. And, you know, and they can't even spring. They want us to spend our good money and they can't even give us good free booze. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Hey, they're cheap. Moving on to group two, Abby Victoria. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just got distracted. This looks like a cheap knockoff soda instead of the actual Coca-Cola, but you know, whatever. Well, you want, um, some my, uh, want some of my tonic water? I brought my own. Oh, I'm um, sure. I think I've got some, I've got some leftover gin here. Do you want to put it in here? Yeah, sure. There you go. Oh, oh wait, 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 that's enough. That's enough. Oh, okay. I'm a bit of a lightweight, you know. Okay, well, I'll take some of your gin then. You can pour it okay. in the bottle here. Um, I mean, it's got the tonic water in there already. Do you want uh -huh. it back? Nah, you can keep it. Okay, well, that's really generous of you. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, I crashed this party tonight. I wanted to see how the rich people live. Oh, I crashed it too. That's you awesome. did? <laughs> I'm, yeah, right. from the, I'm from the south side of town. Okay, gotcha. I'm from the north side of town. Wow, fancy meeting you here. It's great. I know. 
And group three, group three, Nancy Lesjack. And Nancy, I told him, I said, I said, Les is robbing the liquor store. Oh, no, 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 Les, you go ahead. You tell the story. You tell the story. Pull the car out. Pull the car around. Mom. Okay. Thanks. Guys, I think we're ready. Let's do this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm set to pull around the back. I got the motor uh, running, you know, so I can, all I have to do is pedal to the metal. Mom, yeah. mom, mom, be on the lookout. Les has got a lot of the stuff. Okay, let's go. I got a whole bag. Mom, pull around. Mom! Okay. Mom. Okay. okay, I'm there. Come on out. Come on out. I got and group one. Out. Let's go back Sorry. to group one. Back to group one. No, I, I mean... I'm all for charitable things, but I really don't really want to save the cockroach. They just, they don't seem to need saving. I mean, there's so many of them. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you, Paul. I mean, you know, here we are, I mean, we've been sitting here, you know, 20 minutes. You know, I really came here for the free booze and dinner. And, you know, if the dinner is anything like the booze, we get beans and weenies or something. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Give them 50 cents and that'll be my contribution. Oh yeah, these, these cheap, 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 bleeding hearts, every cause that comes along, yeah. cockroach, yeah. It doesn't matter. Back to group is. two, back to group two, back to group two. Oh my God, that is some strong tonic water you've got there. I don't know what you guys are drinking on the south side. It's half tonic, half gin. It's what? Half tonic, half gin. No, the gin's fine. Like, trust me, I can handle my gin. I think it's the tonic water. That's oh, problem. but it's half gin in the tonic water. Oh, wait, wait. So you put half gin tonic water in my gin? Yes. So it's like three quarters gin? Yes. I'm yes. a math major. I know these things. Yes, yes. Oh, well, no wonder it tastes weird. Man, what do you South Side people do putting gin, gin in everything? Well, we don't like to, you know, be too happy at parties. So we like to get a bit sloshed before we come. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. It's a lot more funny for slosh. Right. And group three, back to group three. Watch out, it's in the crosswalk. You're going to hit the lady with the baby carriage. Ah! Oh, well, I'm trying to keep concentrating and get make the getaway and not get a ticket. He just Go back to the party, Mom. Go back to the party. We okay, forgot the here, soda. I'm making a quick right. Soda? We just still. Okay. Going back, we're easing back so they don't miss us. We don't want them to miss us. No. Back to group two, back to group two. That pineapple extravaganza. Group two, Abby and Victoria, Abby and Victoria. See, on the north side, we usually just drink like sparkling water and we throw some vodka in it. Uh, we gotta talk about something else but where we came from. Did you see that lady over there? They picked her up off the floor and carried her out. Did you see that? Oh that, yeah, that's my friend Susie. That was Diana Ross. Oh, that was Diana Ross? Oh, she looked yeah. like my friend Susie. Or maybe it was your friend Susie, but she looked like Diana Ross. No, let's go with Diana Ross. That's so much more exciting. Right. My friend Susie's just a drunk and she always drags down parties. It's super lame. So let's go with Diana Ross. That's way more exciting. Well, back to group one. Back to group one. You know, it's things so bad after all. I, I, it, it's almost like, you know, it's got kind of a gin taste to it. Hmm. These things may not be so bad after all, you know? I mean, I know they call them fried cockroaches, but. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Better. The more you have, I think. Crows on you. Lobster is just a cockroach that lives in the water. So, you know. <laughs> yeah. Good point. You know, a few more drinks of this stuff. You know, I, I, I'm not quite sure, but it, it sort of grows on me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's been, Back to group, group three. Group three. Okay. We're out of the car. Let's take the stuff. Let's go. Okay, it's all stuffed in the back. We got to make our getaway. No, we just got away. You know, we I take it in the oh, house. Now we got it. You telling me we have to unload it already again? Yeah, let's unload it. Bring the kids out. Let's do this. Uh, okay, yeah, call the kids up. Hey, Junior, little brother. Get yeah. your lazy ass out here. Oh, we don't talk like that in this house, do we? I guess we steal stuff. So, hey, little brother, okay. come on. So, we're hey, real um, outstanding citizens. Yeah. Yes, we are. I really apologize for the party. Uh, nice to see you, Mrs. Deanna Ross. My, my brother stole the ginger ale. And this is my mother here. She's like the life of the party. Yes, yes. Be some life, all right. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, we have a good time. We enjoy having a, a good time, you know. I yeah, mean, 
Yeah, you know, we're a little dysfunctional, but there's nothing to worry about, you know? And we it's just okay. borrowed all this stuff anyway, so we just borrowed it. Yeah, right. Group two. Back to group it's two. It's just more interesting. Back to group the party, two. The party was boring without us. So there believe. you go. I can't believe at this dinner. Look at how people are dressed. Black tie and they're serving hot dogs and beans. Do you believe it? What? Well, I do actually, because you know, I read in one of those like sophisticated magazines that they put outside of the bathrooms and the uh, and the hospital rooms. I read that they were like, this is like the new like food, food of the future and that this is what all the rich people are eating now. You know, it, it helps them be more relatable to like the poor folks. Oh, so that's it. I mean, the hot dogs are like really thin. They're, they're designer hot dogs and yeah, everyone you know, came with people's names written on them. Yeah, because it's like, it's like the big restaurants, right? Like every time you make the food smaller, that makes it fancier for some reason. So they just shrunk yeah. down the hot dogs and that made them for rich people. Well, that was really strange. You got this hot dog in the middle of the plate and three beans on the plate. That must be why smaller portions. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I think the three beans is supposed to symbolize, like, I don't know, the three goddesses of the earth or some like weird theology like that. I don't know. I'd be food. Back to scene one. Scene one, you guys are wrapping it up. Wrap it up for us, scene one. Well, you know, the, they're out of booze. And we done out. Uh, what they have for food. Uh, you know, I hear there's another party over on uh, Mercer Island. Uh, oh. Might be a little higher class. Want to try for that one? I don't know about higher, but, you know, it sounded to me like it was a hell of a lot more fun. I mean, it sounded like they're running people over and having some good time. I mean, this all this yak, yak, yak crap. And yeah. I, I do have to admit, so I'm going to take you a couple more bags of these cockroaches. All right, that, that's a good these idea. Gin infused we'll cockroaches are good. Uh, let's call an Uber and let's go. I think that'd be a. Let's yeah, go. yeah, gather up all this stuff. Call the Uber. I, I'm, I'm up. I'm for it. Sounds great. And scene. Yeah, interesting. Good job, everybody. Um, who found that challenging? Anybody find that challenging? A couple people. Uh, was anybody able to follow along and actually kind of do your part, but then also sort of listen to the other ones at the same time? That's hard to do. Anybody? Yeah, it's hard yeah. to listen sort to everybody of. else. You know, yeah, sort of. I think it's kind of, I'm thinking that's why I brought the gin in. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that's why Paul brought in the other party. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, there's some little cool crossovers here. I will say it's pretty entertaining, especially when we're watching, uh, in the, especially in the, like maybe the, the first couple minutes. Because right away, Abby and Victoria had this goofy little weird little relationship. But Paul and Raymond and Bill's discussion was very like boring, like it would be at a party like that. And mm -hmm. then at the, I'm, at the same time, I'm watching in silent movie form, total chaos with Nancy, Les, and Jack was <laughs> insanity. At the, and that, I know in, in real life, in the, st in, the, in the stage, the audience would have been cracking up. Because they would have been seeing you guys doing this stuff while Raymond and Paul are just like, yep, yep. yep. And Bill's <laughs> like, uh-huh, yeah, well, we should, you know. <laughs> so I think the contrast is really nice if you can maintain that without losing control. The other thing is uh, we, we want to be careful with that a little bit just for the class because what we're trying to do is practice giving and taking focus. So, you know, in this case, it's okay to, to you know, to play with it a little bit and experiment. But I also would encourage you to also figure out if you can play it without taking focus. Because Nancy, Les, and Jack, when you guys got really crazy, I thought that was hilarious. Uh, however, for this particular game, it might have been a bit much because the audience is going to start watching you. You know, like unless you were able to do that in total silence, which maybe you could. But if you were like accidentally bumping a chair, you know, and stomping your feet a little bit while you're trying to pantomime, even though that's not vocal, it would make sound and the audience would be looking at you and like, what's going on, you know? So, um, and then that would have taken focus away from Paul Raymond and Bill a little bit too much. Right? So, so you we could have taken it where we were just putting loot into the car, you know, quietly. Right, right. And then Les, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, uh, so we, we want to keep the focus on the one that's talking now, but we're just doing something in the background, right? Right. And so normally what we do on the stage for this one, it, what's funny about Zoom is because you can mute, you really could do crazy stuff and it's actually, it works out great. On the stage, it doesn't work as well because you can't help but drawing it too much attention to yourself. Um, and, the, and then the audience won't really be paying attention to the one, the group that's supposed to have the focus. And so what we normally do is we kind of go into almost like a little bit of a slow motion mode. 
and maybe and and we're we're our voices like fade out to silence or there's like a whisper and then to silence and then you kind of just mute your action so you're still in the scene but you kind of go to a calmer version i don't want to call it slow-mo because you might get the idea that you're literally trying to do something in slow-mo you don't have to play it slow-mo but you go to a calmer more muted version and that really helps the audience to stay focused on the the group that's actually going um yeah. a, again this is a little different with zoom you we know it's a little different or muted or anything we were crazy so yeah you were totally crazy but i have to say it actually kind of worked in this case it doesn't always work though sometimes it distracts but in this case it was actually hilarious but we had <laughs> a good time right les we did yes yeah, yeah it was it was pretty good um great job everybody any other questions on that bill go ahead well yeah one, one comment i'd like to make is one thing i found i don't know about about raymond and, and, and paul or anybody else but it was really interesting for me trying to keep myself divorced from what the other two groups were doing uh -huh. and yet keeping in mind what was going on because I kept having this urge, especially because of what, of what uh, Nancy, Les and Jack were doing because it was so funny and so crazy going on down there. I really had to focus myself on not reacting to that. <laughs> and it was cool. I think it was a really good thing. And for me, it was a good, um, a good test and a good lesson to make sure that I was keeping focus on us and not on them, but yet hearing just enough of what else was going on to be able to hopefully relate it back in at the end like we did. It is a really great uh, challenging skill to develop to be able to focus on two things at once. Um, so you're, you're kind of having your third eye, so to speak, watching your own scene and, you know, watching, you know, the, another scene, but you're staying present in your scene. That's really tough. And that's what this game develops. Um, also, I don't know if you guys intentionally did this or if it was because of what we did in the warm up, but I noticed a lot of people were making statements pretty much the whole time. And there were very few questions. Did you notice that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Which is great because that's all also something that we're working on. That's an improv fundamental in this case. So you made a lot of statements, you added information to the scene and you built the scenes quickly. And there wasn't a lot of questions and which actually typically slow scenes down. So questions, although natural in real life in an improv scene, they slow a scene down most of the time. Uh, sometimes there's, there's a place for them, but most of the time, especially when you're beginning an improv, or you're just trying to develop your group or your scene or the, you know, you don't want a question, you want statements. And in this case, it was mostly statements. And that's also made, also made it work really well. Be careful of denials so that you knew guys and less. I don't want to pick on you too hard, but just there was a couple of times where you denied what they said. It, and it ended up, it was tough because it ended up being hilarious a few times. Like, Oh, you know, like, wait, why are we, <laughs> we already drove down the street or whatever. We don't need to drive down the street, <laughs> right? It was funny, but also remember, you're trying to build the scene with them and you're trying not to deny the reality that they're creating in the scene, right? Um, it's a tough one because sometimes it's hilarious to deny offers in improv. That's the, that's the conundrum we have in improv is every now and then when you deny an offer, the audience cracks up because it's hilarious. But as a general rule, we try to avoid it. We try to like keep in the agreement. And if somebody says that we need to leave and you're like, I thought we already did. Nope, they're right. We need to leave, right? And you can redefine what they mean by that too, though. Like sometimes, you know, the, you can kind of play with the meaning and, and it's more like coming up with a new solution. You have your idea, they have their idea. And you're like, well, let's come up with a third idea, right? So that's the challenge in improv is to somehow blend them together where the audience can still follow along. It's still true, but maybe their wacky idea and your, and your idea that you thought was more grounded is like, well, let's find a new third alternative path. <laughs> so that's kind of the challenge when you run into those, when, you're, when you feel like, I want to deny, meaning I want to say, no, you're wrong, right? Uh, well, it's improv, so they're not technically wrong because it's all made up anyway. <laughs> right? Okay, good job tonight, you guys. Any, uh, uh, next week, uh, we're going to actually continue. We're not going to, I don't think we're going to repeat any of these unless maybe make statements in a warm up, but we have a, I have a whole nother set of things we're going to do. We're actually going to do um, bus stop, which I love. That's a really, really good game because we work on time of day, occupation and age, and then people try to guess it. Uh, that requires some real acting. Um, we're going to see if we can play slackers, which is m one of my favorite improv games, you know, zoom or not zoom. Right. 
And then maybe a few others like accordion freeze and, and some of those, those, those short form games that really build really good, really high quality scenes. So that's what we have in store for next week. Um, that's it for tonight. Any last statements, Ooh. questions, comments? Yeah. I just wanted to say really quick, Jesse, um, I love this class format today with how you taught it in the sense of we're going back after the Herald to do simple sentences, one word story, very to the point and not asking questions and something I need more of after learning, after doing the Herald is, it was really great to see everybody, to your point, not asking questions, but also just getting to the point as quick as possible with their word economy and their word choice. One problem I have is that when me and Bill were doing the breakout rooms, we just kept going and we didn't know where we were going and we just went there instead of, you know, I mean, obviously the game is one word, but I, whereas I might say, you know, Jesse, you look great in those glasses today because you just came back from the mall on Tuesday where we went with, and it just word bomb it. It's Jesse, you look good. And then you come back. And I feel like these games are really designed and it's a testament to how you're teaching where we're just, we're really just going back and forth with each other. We're not bringing a cathedral. We're bringing a brick, you know? So I just wanted to thank you for that. It's, it's, it's making me a better improviser by not feeling I have to have all this, pressure to perform when really I'm just going off the last thing you said. So it's very simple. So, Do you remember that where that improv quote came from that you just used yeah. that analogy? Oh God. Um, is it you? I know you know the answer. Is it uh, the uh, one of the books that you recommended? I forget the name. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, dig it up. I think that's the Upright yeah. Citizens Brigade. Um, but, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah. basically uh, what Jack was referring to really good when you're building a scene, it's like we want to bring the cathedral when all we really needed to do is bring the brick. In other words, we're brick by brick, we're building a scene. We're building together. I bring a brick and then Raymond does and Nancy does and you're just responsible for one idea, one character, one concept, one sentence or even one word at a time. And you don't need to be like, okay, here's my whole house already constructed. Whoa, that's too much information, man. <laughs> So that's a really good reminder, Jack. Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. And I'm, I'm, I'm just learning it myself. And I know Abby did an excellent job of this because she's, her and Les are both experienced trained improvisers. They'll infiltrating us, Jesse. I know they're ah, I knew it. Um, I knew but it. Yeah, but yeah, I appreciate it. Um, all right, you guys, anything else? No, I just want to say, everybody have a good evening. Stay safe. It was nice meeting your alter ego, Jack. Say, tell, tell him I say <laughs> hi. Hey, hey, hang on I, just a minute. I have got on, to do, wait, wait, put wait, the gun downstairs because I want to see what the hell she's looking at. So, so can I just tell you the face back I up for a minute? Things I didn't see it. I saw I think, it. Two things. I, I think Nancy's on drugs. Two. And two. Change no, your project, Jack. No, <laughs> it's actually John Lewis I think you're looking at. Man, now, yeah, probably I'm Jack's not going to pull it up because I, because Bill's coming down because he thinks I'm, I've lost <laughs> another marble. I saw, there's his alter ego, right there. See, I'm not <laughs> whackers. There he is. Uh, Jack, that is a completely different picture, smart ass. See, he's trying to, he's making us all think no, we're I mean, Seriously, me. that's a completely different picture. Well, I see this most of the time, but then he pulls that up. Interesting. See, I don't know what you're looking me. at if it's not my Facebook profile picture. Am I with somebody? You are. Yes. You're, 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 there, there really is. There really you, is. You put up two different pictures. The picture I was seeing was one what? that looks like your face is frozen. Well, I, I don't know about the, that, but what I do that, know is that in in the in the window that used to have Bill in it, since it, he's now with Nancy, there's some huh? other ghost over there. Yeah, oh my God. yeah, I I, yeah we see, see him it. regularly over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm, I'm serious, Jack. In the, in the picture that Nancy's looking at, yeah, there's they, you with with a with a shorter guy standing next to you. Yeah, he looks very nice and, and <laughs> like a real kick in the head. This I, is the I most bizarre like, thing. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse we, need record, bizarre. we need to record. Jack, this put that picture up again. 101. Jack, put that all picture right, up it, again. I'm doing it. Just for you, Nancy. Okay, there now don't you there guys all see that? Yes. <laughs> Okay, Seriously, no. This is, this is, Jack has short hair. He's got short hair and a plaid shirt. And there was an older black gentleman standing right beside you. The picture I saw upstairs was you with what looks like a frozen character with longer hair. Jacques. You aren't screwing with us, you dick. 
No, we didn't see a dick. So that, that could have been interesting. But yeah. All right, you guys. Have a great night. See everybody Bye. later. Bye. See you next time. Bye, guys. And with that, another great improv class. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.